Well, I've still got to do a little work on it. What's it called? Susie. Wow, a song named after a girl. There aren't a million of those already. Name 20. Rosanna, Roxanne, Michelle, Allison, Sarah, Angie, Brandy, Mandy, Gloria, Cecilia, Maggie Mae, Jessica, Nancy, Barbara, Ann, Billie Jean, Layla, Lola, Polly, Helena, Jenny from the Block. Name six more. Sherry, Laura, Wendy, Maria, Peggy Sue, Minnie the Moocher. Name five more. Tracy, Jean, Jane, Mary Ann, Eleanor Rigby. Go fuck yourself. Actually kind of sums up my recent internet dating adventures. Ugh. This is Ego and Vice, episode 86. You've got a real attitude problem, McFly. You're a slacker. Yo, yo, yo! How's everyone doing tonight? My name is Mike. This is Ego and Vice. This is episode 86. I am your host. I am always your host. I've always been your host. I'll always be your host. Whether you like me or not, I'm here to stay. So what's new? What's crack a lackin'? What's going on out there in this crazy world? And it is a crazy world, my friends. So the mask mandate got lifted. We can start there. How's everyone feel about that? On Monday, everyone just, you know, legally doesn't have to wear a mask anymore. I'll tell you about my day. I woke up and I went to Shoppers Drug Mart on the Monday, the day of. And I can report that I didn't see anyone without a mask on. Everyone that was in Shoppers Drug Mart, keep in mind it was about 10 after 8 in the morning. But everyone had a mask on. And I was like, okay, maybe they didn't get the memo. Or maybe things might stay, you know, rational. Went to work. And around lunchtime, I decided to go to Farm Boy. And I was like, hmm, 1230 at a Farm Boy? That place is going to be jumping. And it was. It was jumping. I got there, I walked in, and the place was full, just full of people shopping and stuff. But, again, I'll report that, I don't know, 95% of the people still had their masks on. There was a few people just walking around, doot, 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 you know, without one. The people you expect to not wear them, I'll leave that to your imagination. And, um... There was one woman. I went to the to the salad bar. Now that the salad bar's back, which is very exciting because Farm Boy salad bar is amazing. It's awesome. Farm Boy itself is amazing. Farm Boy has never led me astray. It's never done me wrong, as they say. It's like the greatest grocery store of all time. Anyway. So I'm standing at the salad bar and there's a woman there. And she was actually she actually didn't have a mask on, so I was just like, okay, whatever, you know. It's 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 it felt like there was some harmony in the air, you know. Before you used to walk into a place and someone didn't have a mask on, and you'd immediately feel that pit of stomach, kind of like, ooh, 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 this guy, look at this guy, right? But I guess with a law being passed, not a law, but the mandate being lifted. I guess there's a little bit more leniency on on our part, especially my part, because I saw them and I was still a little bit like, you, but I guess it's okay. So there was a bit of harmony in the air. Anyway, this woman was standing by the salad bar, and she got her salad, dumped it into her 
little container, and then she decided to start fumbling around with her purse. She put her purse on the edge of the of the edge of the counter, and she's looking through it, and she's digging through her cart. And I don't know. I was repping my my work company colors that day, so I didn't want to push too hard. I didn't want to be my usual self. So I just kind of I didn't mean to, but I just started kind of like saying. The words other people under my breath. I was like, other people, other people, other people. And before I knew it, after about 15 seconds, I was like right behind this woman and I was like at volume, like room volume. Other people, other people, other people. And she turned around and I just kind of looked at her and I was like, holy shit, I totally just fucking said that really loud 16 times and she gave me the stink eye with her weird she had like weird like duck lips you know the like the botox i guess it is or whatever they have put in their their mouth she had these weird like and maybe not maybe she had normal lips but i've just been like so um i haven't seen like a face in so long that i was just shocked at seeing a bottom of a face like oh my god it's the bottom of a face so it looked very odd to me and wet. So I, I guess, well, she left. And I continued to build my salad, which was delicious, by the way. So, yeah, I was thinking, like, yeah, I guess it's going to be a slow transition, you know. Maybe everyone, you know, the majority of the people are going to keep wearing them, which I think is good. I'm going to keep wearing mine, not only because of COVID itself, but because... I don't know. I don't want to breathe in your gross fucking whatever, you know, is floating around the air. It's true. You know, and um, I was thinking of doing like a crash course. What if I just like go to Costco or like to Walmart and just like go to the furniture, the um, the lawn section and get one of those foldable chairs and just prop it up in the aisle way and just spend the whole day there? And just literally, like, desensitize myself to the human face again. Do it all in one big shot. That's a plan. You know. Like, I've done everything in my life. It's all or nothing. If I quit smoking, I gotta quit smoking, quit drinking, quit vaping, and quit eating sugar and fast food all at one day. It's the only way I can do it. So, that's it. Anybody want to come and camp out at Walmart? with me on a face desensitized mission will be changed people just saying i have a guest on the podcast today her name is chelsea miller she is a host on a radio host on live 88.5 she's been on the podcast before a few years ago but like i said season five pre post pandemic in you know loose loose post pandemic i'm having some people on that i've had on before just to catch up find out what they've been doing how they've been chelsea is a good friend of mine i called her this on the previous podcast she's the coolest cat in the land always a great conversation tons of fun and it was a pleasure to um to talk with her Oh, I mean, oops, I mean, I'm going to give her a call, and I hope she's home, and I hope she talks to me. I hope. Anyway, so I'm going to play a song as usual, and I will come back with the hostess with the mostess, Live 885's Chelsea Miller. This is Ego and Vice, episode 86. <laughs> Tearing up the late night, sleeping through the morning 
a goddamn thing inside to each his own Ain't that right? So you'll find me on the corner with a smoke and a 40 Got tickets to the punk show tonight So pull around the back I'll be waiting outside Ooh. Where you headed tonight, kid? Do you think I could catch a ride? Ooh. Where you headed tonight, kid? Do you think I could catch a ride? What's up, Miller? It's Mike. Hey, hey, buddy, what's going on? Oh, not much, not much. It's been a while. I know. How are things? Oh, you know, I'm uh, getting by. Just coming, just getting. As I like to say, I'm getting squirted out of the end of the pandemic. Right. And, you we know, are. trying to get, uh, trying to get back to normal life as normal as it can be. But um, I guess that's with everybody nowadays. I would think so. Yeah, the, I, I keep saying on the radio that the light at the end of the tunnel is getting much brighter. Yeah. So it's not blinding me yet. Yeah. But it's getting there. We you just, know. It's and then what's the other saying where you just hope it's not the uh, the headlight of a train? <laughs> yes. <laughs> a speeding train coming towards you. Yeah, I hope it's not that. So, yeah. but yeah, I agree. It is. Uh, it'd be nice to get out of this old pandy, as the, I call it, the pando. Yeah. Yeah, um, the old pandy. I, I was not. Uh, people were saying like to me too. They're like, "Oh, it must have been good to have so much downtime. You could have like wrote songs or been creative." I wasn't very creative, to be honest with you. I was just like kind of. I was very like lethargically kind of stuck in, uh, like autopilot bummed outness. <laughs> yep, I agree. I I was just saying the other day. I literally just said this the other day, that I don't know. I. The pandemic did a lot to us, you know, a lot of, all, did so much to all of us on mm -hmm. so many different levels. And for me specifically, it literally sucked any type of motivation I had out, like any type. Like I used to love to get up and I'd go work out and like yada yada, you know what I mean? If I, if I was bored, I'd go running, you know, and now I just have my, like my couch seatbelt secured tightly to my hips and I never want to take it off. Yeah. Ever. You know, so now, mind you, it was really hard to go to a gym when you couldn't. So then you're like looking around the house trying to find things to work out with because <laughs> not everybody had already a gym set up. So you're like pumping soup cans, you know, yeah. and like doing whatever. And I'm like, this is this is not working. Bags you know? of flour. Yeah. 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 Whatever. If you had any flour that you could buy at the time, you know, like it's just I'm, I'm, I'll be so happy when it's done. Now, mind you motivation is coming back like i just went i just traveled which was really great oh yeah uh yeah so we took off for a week and went away and uh it wasn't as big of a headache as i thought it was going to be which was also really encouraging mm -hmm. um well, so how, how was it what was it like to travel did you have issues like um at the border and all, well customs and all that stuff no no we went to mexico so oh. i don't know what it's like going to other places but uh we went to mexico and like i'm you know vaccinated boosted whatever so i'm a superhero now plus i got covid over the holidays yeah so, you're you're, you're, good. Uh, you're set yeah I, yeah like i had covid over christmas so um and i didn't have any problems it's mostly just making sure that you have all of your ducks in a row yeah like have all of your you know like i ended up i i actually had to buy a new cell phone before we went because i couldn't download any of the apps i needed like, oh 
my, my phone was so old that I couldn't get like the Arrive Can app, which is you needed that to get back. So I was like, God damn it. Hence the motivation. I wasn't motivated. My phone was still working. Why, why did I need to go anywhere? Why, yeah. why did I need to get a new phone? You know? I have that problem right so, now. My phone's a piece of shit. But anyway, go on. Yeah. So anyway, so um, yeah, if you have all that stuff and you have all your documentation and like it's, it's easy peasy. You do get rushed around a lot to wait, you know? It's like, hurry, 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 wait. And you're like, what the fuck am I hurrying for? If I'm just going to wait, right? Yeah. Um, well, so, but did you stay besides at a, that, it was great. Did you stay at a resort? Yes. Well, what was that like? Was just just like here, masks walking around and yeah, sit down so they and you can ask, take it off type of thing? Yeah, they ask you they ask you to wear a mask to go get your food. Mm-hmm. We only had buffets at the resort. Our resort was fucking massive. It was a way too big of a resort, but whatever. It was still gorgeous. Yeah. We were in Mazatlan. We were in Mazatlan, so it's just uh, south of Santa Loa. Uh-huh. Anyways, so we stayed at this beautiful resort, and five pools, and like crazy bars, and like five restaurants. But like none of the a la carte restaurants were open. Right, so you always had to have buffet. So even if you went to a different buffet, it still tasted the same all the time. You know? <laughs> just like eating the same stuff. So yeah, to put a mask on to go get your food. Sit down, same as here. Take your mask off. Um, you know, you're, there's so much space. You, you didn't like, I would put my mask on to walk through the lobby. I put my mask on if I was in the elevator. Yeah. Um, but then like by the pool, like some people would wear their masks to the washroom, but we were outside, you know, I was like, ah, fuck, I don't care. You know? Yeah. And I, no one, no one was chasing you being like, ah, like there's no mask police or anything. No, no, I um, guess not. Well, I guess, I guess the resorts are pretty, can you, can I use the term like Westernized? Does that make sense? Like North, yes, yeah. like a uh, very Americanized or, or I don't know, just stuff. For, it's yeah, not yeah. Like, it's not like you're going to Mexico to stay in like a traditional little village or something. You're, you're. No. You, sorry. Anyway, <laughs> you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. We did experience, we did experience some of that though. Like we ended up taking, um, we did like this little off resort tour thing where we went to this Island that was called like skull Island or something. Nice. Uh, and it was, yeah. And it was like really, it was really rural, like super rural, you know, like a family of six on like one moped kind of thing. You know what I mean? And like no helmets and whatever. Yeah. yeah. Their rope, their speed bumps were just a uh, rope from ships that they had laid over the dirt road. <laughs> and it worked because they were pulling us all in like tractors that had like, eight wagons behind it right because uh-huh. they pick up everybody from the boat you get on this like wagon and then they'd wagon you to this restaurant and then that's where you would go and you would enjoy like activities and like blah 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 but if we didn't have our little tour guide girl with us because we had booked through the hotel we would have been lost because there wasn't a lot of english spoken and none of us speak spanish so right you know you'd be sitting there in your phone all the time like google translate uh you know i uh so. i've only been to mexico once i went um but it was part of a cruise, so I just oh. I just kind of stopped there, right? And um, would you ever? Would you? I I would. I've been on a cruise, and I don't think that I would go on a cruise again. No, no, <laughs> I don't. I I, I kind of didn't want to go on the one I when I the one I was <laughs> on to be honest with you. But once you're on yeah, the boat, yeah. once you're on the boat, you're kind of stuck. Um, you are kind of stuck until you get to the ports, and they're like, hey. Welcome to wherever we are. It's gorgeous. It's great. Get off the boat. Be back in 20 minutes. You're like, ah, yeah. you know, like you're always on like a timeline, you know? And you're just harassed by the vendors. They just, you know. Harass. Yeah. yeah. You, you you even look them. Don't look them in the eye because they, they won't no. leave you alone. And no. put, put your wallet in your front pocket. Yeah. But, Everything's uh, sheepy, sheepy. Yeah. Sheepy, cheapy. I, I, um, <laughs> actually, I had Jen on the podcast, Traplin, a couple of podcasts oh, yeah. ago. And she nice. we she was on that cruise with me. That's when we went with like uh yeah, like a fam- oh my God. family and friends and we were talking we didn't really cover it too much, but yeah, it was in Mexico and I don't know, it was good. We had tacos. It was you know yeah. I don't know if that's like super something you do in ta- in Mexico, but they were wonderful. Anyway. We had lots of tacos. Lots of tacos. Yeah. And, I, and lots of beer. I've stayed on a resort once and that was um I was in Saint Lucia. Mm. That was nice. my that was my honeymoon. That's weird to say because that was a long to, time ago. Yeah, that is a very long time ago. Yeah, that was like two thousand six. But I uh, I like oh. resorts because they I like I just like the setup, and that was the first time I'd ever been to something like that. And I haven't mm. traveled 
uh, like that in so long, pandemic or no pandemic. So I'm very envious. I, I want to plan a trip now. Well, we flew be- right before the pandemic hit. So what, March, whatever, when it was like official, official. Mm-hmm. Uh, we flew at the beginning of January, went to Maui uh. for Sean, my boyfriend, for his um, niece's wedding. Mm. So there ended up being like, I don't know, I think it was like 15 of us or 16 of us or something. Whoever could go, there was a really great deal. And we didn't stay at a resort that time. Uh, we ended up staying in a, a well, we we didn't book a resort, but we ended up having it like stayed in like a timeshare kind of. Yeah. So we had a pool and we had like the lobby and we had everything. We mm-hmm. were just paying another company for it. So we had all the amenities that it would have been and it was great like we rented a car we drove around you know um you're buying booze across the street you're buying all your groceries you're making them in your apartment yeah so. that's that's pretty cool it's like you're like yeah. you're, it's like you're a local yeah 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 for sure yeah and it was it was awesome and did the whole island and it was great so i appreciate both types of those types of like resort love it yeah. you don't have to think yeah. dumbs everything down i'm good and then the other one where you actually like just have a house and then the rest is all your adventure that you go on and usually find really cool shit. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. I love the, which I guess is like both ends of the spectrum, I guess. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess so. Um, I don't know. I guess it's what you, what's your up to what, what, what you feel up to. I think the latter of you like renting your own house would be a lot more work. Whereas yeah. you're very pampered in a resort, but yeah, but you know, it is what Whatever it is. You feel like. um, yeah, exactly. I don't know. I don't know when I'm going to go. I think what I want. I think my first trip, once I get some time off, I'm starting. A, I'm starting a new job, so I probably won't have any time off for a while. Oh, uh, um, well, good for you. Congratulations. Oh, thank you, thank you. I don't. Yeah. Uh, I haven't started yet, so I'm not going to get into it too much. But I think the first thing I want to do is I think I'm going to drive to New York and see my sister. Excellent. Yeah, it's been a long That's time, great. and her her my niece Bronwyn, she's like my sister's only like five feet tall, and Bronwyn is like I think she's like ten years old, and she's as tall as my sister now. So it's been a long oh, time wow. since I've seen her. So I, I'm looking for. Yeah. I, I'd like to. I'd like to do that. I haven't really made plans with her, and she doesn't really know anything. But I, I'm just I'm gonna go there. I'm just gonna go. So we just won't tell her to listen to this edition of the podcast. We don't want to spoil spoil anything. Yeah, if this if I don't yeah, yeah if this is how she keeps <laughs> if this is how she keeps up with my daily bullshit then yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess I don't don't, know. don't listen don't listen to this one this time yeah we are driving we're we're going to Boston in May oh I fucking love Boston I was in Boston a couple yeah. years ago yeah yeah so we're going down for um, a festival nice yeah why can't I think of it Boston calling. Hmm. That's where we're going. Yeah, it was. We were supposed to go. I don't know about you, but I have so many concerts that I have lined up for this summer because they've all been rescheduled for this summer. Oh. from two years ago. Oh, you had like existing tickets you had bought that they're going to yes. honor type of thing. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's Boston Calling, uh, Blues Fest as well, which is like we have those. We've had those just been like pushing them for two years. Pearl Jam tickets here in Ottawa. They just announced a new date. Don't so you don't crazy. you usually go how. to like um, what's the one in Montreal? Oshie oh, no, Oshiega yeah yeah Oshiega yeah. is that the one you go to? I think I remember. Yep, you did. That's cool. And I think there's yeah. a, I don't know there's another one. Um, no, I don't really have anything really lined up. Um, the rip you know my band the Riptides we're playing Hope this year. Yeah, are you? Yeah, excellent. Yeah, so that's... you guys, Twin Flames, Headstones, and July Talk, correct? Yes, and I think there's some other local ones too. I don't know. Cool. It usually is. So yeah, it's gonna be fun. It's good, good, uh, good day back at Hope, and it's also like yeah. uh, it'll be fun to. Um, it was. It's a good. It's a good thing to look forward to just to kind of get the ball rolling again with the band. Yeah, because I haven't. Because yeah, yeah. uh, we haven't seen each other in forever. Well, well, forever. Two years. The last. Yeah. The last time I I actually saw the guys in like person was the Christmas the Riptides Christmas party we played at the Dom. Okay. In 2019, December 13th, 2019 was the last time I saw any of those guys like in the flesh. So I was invited to that show. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. I was supposed to go to that show. I remember it now. Yeah. Um, just a side note. If you hear some odd humming or it sounds like snoring, that's just my dog. Uh, she's in here and she's sleeping. No problem. 
Yeah. Okay. And this is, well, she's not even sleeping. She's just a bulldog and she can't breathe. So. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> um, she has the breathing issue. So. I want to go see Alexis on Fire at Blues Fest. Yep. That's one I I really am looking forward to. I saw them at what's what's the what's the what's the arena called now? Is it Scotiabank Place still? Here? Yeah. In town? Yeah. No, uh, yeah, CTC, Canadian Tire Center. Oh yeah, yeah, Canadian Tire Center. Sorry, it's just right. I haven't even thought about this. The Canadian Tire Center. I saw them Alexis on Fire. They actually opened for uh Billy Talent. Um, a friend of mine had, had, had like box tickets and we used to go, um, sit in the box and cause it was free shows. Right. And yeah. we went to that one and Alexis on fire opened for them in, in the arena. And it was fucking amazing. It was so good. And then they broke up for so, like six years <laughs> and now yeah. they're back together though. And it's, it's awesome. So I can't wait for, that's the one reason I'm going to go to blues fest this year. Um, we, so Eric and I. I mean, you know Eric, our mutual friend. Oh yeah, we were we were at, we were in Collingwood at Edge Fest or Wakestock, mm-hmm. and the lineup was Alexis on Fire, USS, and Public Enemy. <laughs> there you go. That's a fucking it's across the spectrum a it, little. Eh? It was it was ridiculous. It oh. was so crazy. They are so good. Public we Enemy must have been amazing. Oh, Public Enemy was it was unbelievable. Yeah. It was unbelievable. But then I I saw Prophets of Rage in Montreal. Uh, oh my god, back in 2016. Mm-hmm. And like Chuck D, uh, he only had like two dance moves where it looked like he was shoveling the whole time with the microphone, uh-huh. you know. And then he would like switch sides. So if he was going left to right, then he'd go right to left and just swinging. And I was like, is that what I'm gonna dance like when I get to that age? Like that was it. Like there's no that was the only rocking out that he was doing. Um, but it was, it was fantastic. It was, it was absolutely fantastic. And I always thought I wanted to be in the mosh pit. And then I got there and I saw what the pit was like for profits of rage. And I was like, I am so glad I'm not in there. No, they'd like, pro- I'm, you, I'm too pro- old for that. You'd probably still be there. You'd probably still be would, in the, in, in the yeah. mosh pit. No, I would still be in the mosh pit. No, no, thanks. I can't, I can't do that. I'm too old and brittle nowadays. They, they would literally kick the, the shit out of me. Um, well, and in Montreal, yeah. and in Montreal, I don't know what it like. The punk rock fans, hardcore fans in Montreal, they are hardcore. Yeah, and like, there's no give. You know, no. it's either like a hundred percent or just get out of there. I uh, let let me say about three years ago, I went to a local bar to see a band. Um, me and my friend went, and there was a mosh pit, and I said, ah, you know what the hell? Because I really liked the band, and I was. <laughs> And I jumped in the mosh pit and immediately, immediately my brain went, I hate this. Cause I, <laughs> I like, I literally put my hands up and I put my hands on someone's wet, hot back. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, and, and I was yeah. like, I fucking hate this, but I couldn't just go in. And so I stayed in for a minute and then I came out and I was literally like panting. Like, <gasps> yeah. And I said, that's it. That's it. Yeah. No. <laughs> Also, it's it's easy. It's uh, I'm fine to admit it. I'm not a very tall person, you know. Mm. Like I'm five two and a half. So if I get in a pit with people that are my age, they're probably like I'm in my early forties. There's probably going to be people in there that are much taller than me and the same age as me, yeah. and I just look like a child beside them. And I'm just going to get my ass kicked, just like kicked. just like a bounce, like a, like a pinball, just like bouncing around a fucking machine. Like no, I'm good. <laughs> I'm gonna stand over here. I'll hold everybody's drinks. Yeah. You have a good time. Like when you I'll get when the more. ball gets stuck between the bumpers, that ding 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 ding. That's, that's that is me. <laughs> that would totally be me, and no one would give a shit. Yeah, no one would care. You yeah. know, just, I'd just be stuck there, like ding 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 ding, ah, and then try to fight my way out. Like, like I don't know. Like Boston Calling is gonna be crazy because Run the Jewels are playing, Foo Fighters are playing, wow. like Rage is playing in Ottawa, which is also going to be nuts. Oh yeah, so, right. Yeah. Th- that that's another layover from two years ago, wasn't it? Weren't they supposed mm-hmm. to be here then? Yeah. Yeah. I might have to go. Yeah, I might go to that one just to say I went to that one. Yeah. I um. And Alanis, Alanis, hello, Alanis is gonna be there. Yeah, that'd be interesting. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> Alanis, I could take her, leave her. You know. What about TLC? They're gonna be there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's some that's some nice retro. What is that? What would you call that? Like hip hop? Uh, R and B? Yeah. 
R and B hop, I guess. R and B hop. I don't know. I don't know. I don't I'm know. sure before they were called. I, I when TLC was like big, which was what ninety. Yeah. But that era. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that would be considered hippie hoppy, hip or maybe hippie poppy. I don't know. I don't know. There was no hybrids then, right? Like now you have like rock or pop rock, you know, like or whatever, like like whatever. Uh, what's his name? Machine Gun Kelly calls himself. Right? Oh yeah, now he's or like pop a pop punk. Now pop he's, punk. Now, is he's, that he's, it? now he's a pop rap punk pink guitar dude, eh? Like what happened there? Yeah. He just it's like new. He put out how many? He put out four rap albums, yeah, he? or five, and then makes friends with Travis Barker. And then puts out this pop punk record, and now hip hop is gone. He gets in fights with, you know, Eminem and Conor uh, McGregor. Wasn't didn't he have a like, Conor a, McGregor was <laughs> yeah. Conor McGregor yeah, took then, a swing at him. Yeah, and then he picks up uh, Megan Fox and uh, drinks her blood. So like I don't know, like the transition was it it was really crazy. Yeah, the world it it, it may be the apocalypse just because of everything you just said. You never know. You I'm, never know. I, I don't even. Maybe yeah, I don't get it. It's just like, I'm just gonna put a slap slap a new coat of paint on myself, and now I'm a pop emo punk star. I don't get it. But I guess, hey man, yeah. you can do what you want. People are buying. It. People are buying the records. I guess so. All the power. People to People are them. loving it. Yeah. People are loving it. I guess. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. He was good in. He was good in that Montley Crew biopic. He he played a good to- young Tommy Lee. Dude, so good. I know. So good. And I like read that book, too, and right. then to watch the movie. Yeah, with all the, the with all the debaucherous freaking. Did you ever read? Yeah. Did you ever read um, Nikki Six, the Heroin Diaries? No, I never read that one. Where it's basically just his journal from around from that time he was just out of his mind, like living in his closet, just doing heroin all day. That book is and dying <laughs> and dying a couple times. That yeah. that book <laughs> yeah. that book is bananas. Like I highly recommend it. It you blast through it too because it's the way it's structured and stuff. Do you think that there? So, uh, not, I'm going to admit I'm not a big reader, but I love audiobooks. Like, oh yeah, yeah, them. absolutely. Yeah, I bet you there's an audiobook of it, isn't there? Uh, yeah, I don't see why because it read it, it. It's still a book. Like it's still you have still mm-hmm. have to turn the pages and stuff. I'm and he look and for he it. and he also other than just his um. His journal entries, he also narrates it. So, like, he might oh. say, oh, yeah, we did this, blah, 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 blah. This is when I was blah, blah, blah. And then he'd read the journal thing. So, it's right. it reads as a book. You know what the shitty thing is, though? Uh, like, late, early last year, or, or just late last year, he released a, uh, Nikki Six put out another book. Okay. And it and it's called 20 Years Sober. It's like, I don't want to read that book. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm good. I want to. Yeah, read, yeah. I, I don't want to. I don't want to read that boring <laughs> book about you getting up and eating oatmeal. You know what I mean? Yeah. So my day starts by meditation. Yeah. Uh, I go for a walk. I have my cheese seeds or whatever. Yeah, that's not boring. <laughs> it's, I don't want to hear that. You know, a book. If you want to listen to a great audiobook, uh, I'm a huge No Effects fan. Like huge No Effects fan. Yep. Uh, and the No Effects book, the audio book. Oh, is what is that called again? On real yeah it's unreal i can't what is it called again i can't even remember what it's called but i like i loved it because they like they narrate it themselves right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so like mike's talking about his part smelly's talking about his part they have like guest parts that come in to re uh to read parts of band members that aren't there anymore you know el yeah. jefe reads his own stuff isn't, isn't like, that a book about like crazy stories and debauchery and unbelievably fucking upside down things yeah 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 i, I heard I, I heard like i read like a review on it yeah and it's, um the book literally like so they redid uh they redid lithium like they did a, a, did a new version of lithium right and, they changed and, the lyrics right? i heard that yeah they, they, yeah they changed the lyrics it's great it's so funny but in the song one of the lyrics talks mike talks about how his daughter who she's now a teenager yeah listened or read the book and then found out that her dad likes to be peed on. Yeah, he drinks but his. I drink, he drinks his wife's pee, and he likes it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But she found that out like from the book, you know. And then he wrote it into the song. Yeah. He also is so. He also sober too. Well, he was sober. He was. Yeah. Was, I don't think he is anymore. I saw him on a podcast 
or he he's doing his own podcast as well. Fat Mike's um, Fat Mike, yeah. It's it's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Anyway, and he got whoever he was on somebody else's podcast and apparently got a, a gin martini. So I was like, oh, I guess oh. you're not sober anymore then. But well, yeah, what are you gonna do? Yeah, seems to be East seems girl. to he seems to be the same person. So I guess he's doing all he right. Does. But well, their it, last album, he was stone sober, and his lyrics are phenomenal. Well, he's a great songwriter, dude. Amazing. Like he's so he's so like witty and and and, but not he, he, anyway. He's just yeah, he's a good lyricist. He he knows like you know anyway. Blah. I'm rambling on that. <laughs> anyway, anyway. So other than that, what uh, how how uh, how's work been? Uh, now I guess you're all back to full full speed. Everything's the same as. The radio, you're back in the you're back in the studio. You're yeah, we were um, the the announcers, like the jocks, I guess. We've been back in the studio for a while, mm-hmm. and we've been the only ones really back. I would say since last fall, maybe the fall before. I don't know. Uh, but we have like this, like we have the plexiglass that's up. You know, there's only like we each are in in the room alone so we're not really doing any kind of crossover stuff not yet anyway yeah. that's going to change though with everything opening up but yeah we've been back home and then it's nice because we have the setup it took 8 months for us to get all set up at home yeah um you know some of us have certain things others have other things and all that was was a supply chain issue because uh we couldn't get, everybody wanted everybody wanted shit everybody wanted mics everybody wanted cords everybody wanted headphones you know what i mean so Unless you had that stuff at home, uh, we had to wait a little bit. So the quality from at home has gotten way better oh, yeah. than, you know, <laughs> than at the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, and now it kind of gives you that option um, that if – because before we always were we, – we always would go in, right, because we were in ratings. So you always had to make sure that you were there for ratings. You always had to be in. You couldn't call them sick. You couldn't be sick. You always had to go in. Mm-hmm. So if you were sick, fuck it. You had to go. Um and I think that that's one thing that the pandemic has really shown us is that um, you, we have the ability to not do that. And like we can stay home and can still get the job done. Yeah. Uh, and we don't have to be forced to be going to work sick. Like taking care of us is important, but we can also still take care of the station at the same time. So do you have that? Um, op- do you have that option now or do they want you to come in? Can you be like, nah, I'm just going to do it from home today. It's a very, um, you know, it's, it's a very open door policy right now. It's more on the comfortability. Like how comfortable are you? Uh, If you're not comfortable being at work for whatever reason, or um, yeah, you're sick or whatever, you can stay home. Absolutely. That's that's totally fine. That's awesome too. Right. Because it's like, it's not like you're missing anything. You can still completely do your job. Yeah. The only thing that you, the only thing you're missing uh, is phone calls, obviously, because that takes Um. another piece of technology to be able to do that. But we text so much now with our listeners that it's okay. You know what I mean? Like, we don't really need to have that audio. Um, Noah is different because he uh, has this cool device that actually works that he can take phone calls at home via the station. It's mind-blowing, and I couldn't explain how it worked. They, but They just get, like, forwarded to him, maybe? I, I guess, know. yeah. It's, like, through some... Through one, and he has a huge board. Like, honestly, my setup is a laptop an app on my phone, an adapter and a mic. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And Noah has his full, Noah's got like, he's got like nine computers and like, you know what I mean? Like he's got all this shit going on. So he can go, he can pretty much do whatever he wants from home. Right. Like yeah. we all have different setups for what our needs are. Um, and if it came down to it, and I needed to have a setup where I needed a phone at home. We could probably figure something out, sure. but I yeah, really prefer yeah. I, if we had to, but I honestly am fine. Personally, I'm fine with the text. You know, I, I get everything done. I have two screens in here. Uh-huh. Um, it's totally fine. I prefer to be at the station, but I work better there. Yeah, the, the atmosphere, I guess, right? At home, you're, if you yeah. just roll out of bed and be like, oh, I guess I got to do this type of thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I guess because yeah, so, like, you have, you have to, you, it's, it's different types of energy, right? Totally. Yeah. Now, this, the energy is uh, also going to change now because we are slowly, as an office, yeah. reopening. So we're going to start. We're going to start to reopen. Um, yeah, we're going to start to reopen with other people coming in and like all that stuff. So yeah. that'll be a different form of energy because there's going to be more people. Plus, so either we'll be 
way more freaked out by more people being around or will love it. I yeah. don't know. Plus when you record from home, all you hear is dog snoring. <laughs> exactly. it's like what is, what, what when, is that what the when hell? we when the first week that we had to go from home mm. i got a text on the like someone texted in charles uh someone's snoring beside you <laughs> like we can hear it like you might want to like get out of bed or like move but i'm like not in bed i'm like and at that point we had two bulldogs i'm like those are my dogs they're like oh my god your dogs are so cute yeah. oh let's take pictures blah blah so then Gertie and Charlotte at the time, when we had her, literally became part of the show. Like, oh, like, yeah, oh, they we were can... like the mascots? Go, yeah. They're like, oh, we can hear your dog. That's so cute. La, la, la. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. It's so loud. Like trying to do the news and be serious. And then all of a sudden you hear, like, oh, that's, not, that's not, not a good time. Jen will tell you the same thing. Every time she went to do the news, somehow her cat would always just meow at like the perfect time. It's right. like, yeah. But well, they don't want to be... They don't want to be without you. Yeah, that's. They uh, just want to be beside you. That's the perils of uh, home recording. I think eh? it's like. Anyway. Yeah, man. It's pretty funny. Yeah, though. totally. And uh, how's the bone? The bone's good, man. We're we're better now. Yeah. Um. Obviously, we had. So if we go just looking at this year, we had January where we had to close, mm-hmm. right? We just take out, um, and then February we got to open up. But then there was the occupation downtown. That was so awesome, then man. that, oh yeah, it was great. Mm-hmm. So that affected us. Um, so we lost out. We did okay on on Valentine's Day, yeah. uh, but then we lost the next weekend, which would have been our full capacity first time full capacity weekend. Yeah. So we lost that. So uh, now that that is gone and over, uh, we are definitely ramping up. And now that we're back to full capacity or as much capacity as we want to do, um, it's great. Awesome. And uh, just to clarify, that is the whale's bone on Elgin Street. <laughs> yes, um, the whale's bone. Yes. Uh, I thought uh, I thought today was Valentine's Day. I thought they re well, I thought they rejigged it. No. It's the redo. Today's the redo <laughs> it's, Valentine's it's, Day. It's the Redux. The re, the two point <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know honestly how many restaurants. At least, like I think it was more focused on in the market specifically, but um, I don't know how many people like in Centertown are redoing it. Uh, as restaurant goes, it's just a regular Monday. For us, yeah, so that's it. I, I really... guess it's like I wouldn't know. I didn't call to make reservations to know oh. if I could get them or not. So uh. <laughs> can I? Yes. Oh, okay. oh yeah. I'll call you back. Bye. Uh, yeah. So it'll be inter- it'll be. Um, we're definitely looking forward to obviously summer yeah. patio season. Yeah, you know, I think yeah. everybody is. Uh, I think it's going to be interesting to see 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 what happens when we get to take our masks off. Oh, that's coming, um, eh? That's really soon. That's really soon. That's a, I, yeah, that's a week today, and uh, the jury's still out. On there's definitely some guests and staff who want to keep wearing them, and that's they fine. can keep wearing them if they want. You I'm, know, absolutely. Like you keep wearing it all you want, and then. Uh, our bosses are letting our owners are letting us do whatever we feel comfortable with. Yeah, so. I'm still gonna wear mine like at work and in people's houses and stuff. Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna wear mine where I yeah I I I think that um you know I think it'll depend like I'm definitely gonna have my mask handy I I at work I'm not gonna feel I'm gonna feel naked at first. Yeah, like, it's, it's gonna, gonna be, be it's gonna be weird. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a transition. Mind you, like, I'm still going to have to wear them inside other certain places. So um, we're always going to have a mask on us for now. Yeah. Uh, I think by summertime, when the windows are open, there's a consistent airflow through places. You know what I mean? Once that happens, I think that it'll be, uh, that's when a lot of more people will feel comfortable just being like mask burning party. See you later. Bye. Yeah, you know? for sure. Like I'm, I'm going to wear, I mean, like I said, I'm going to wear the mask when I'm, when I'm in people's houses, just even for like, like, because you've heard this before where people are talking about, I haven't even had a cold in like two years, you know, because you're taking precautions. I'd like to keep that going throughout the rest of my life. You know, I don't want, I don't want a cold. Even if COVID's yeah. not, a, even if COVID's not an issue, it's just like touching other people's like stuff. And, you know, it's just cleaner. It just feels like it is. Even if it's like the mask is a placebo, it makes me feel better. I also hope that the hand sanitizers stay around. Yeah. 
Oh, you, right? can, you like, can always have the little one in your pocket too. If yeah, you for sure. I just love it being handy. Like, and I use them. I use it all the time. Yeah. But, like even sitting at the, at the radio station, there's nobody else but me. Like nobody. Yeah. And it's just me in the in the booth, You're and just... it's just me. And I'm like, all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, hand sanitizer. Like Sandy. hand sanitizer, you know? <laughs> or like if I blow my nose or whatever, like, yeah. like I, I, you know, do that. I'm like, oop. Sanitize, you know, no, I got, and then like we wipe everything down too. Like we wipe everything down. So I got maybe go ahead. Cleanliness will stick around. The cleanliness, maybe we'll be just cleaner as a society. No, I doubt it. I think I think <laughs> yeah. we're gonna go back to our fucking ways because like when I was doing deliveries and stuff, um, when I used to go into restaurants, it was just like people were wiping down. You could tell that the doors were clean. And now it's just like you walk in, you can see the handprints and the fingerprints all over the glass. And it's just like, Oh God, we're doomed. But one thing too is with the hand sanny, I liked it, but I used it so much during the winter is that my skin, like the back of my hand looks like I'm like 85 years old. There's like zero. Oh, la- There's like zero <laughs> elasticity left in it. It's like hanging off me like a fucking <laughs> rotting that. corpse. It's like you have to have the dual, like you have to have the sandy, you let it dry, then you have to have the cream. You're just like always putting shit on your hands yeah. constantly. It just it's always... whether soap, sandy, moisturizer. I had a you me- know? yeah, I had a method too. Like I got really picky about the sandy, where it's like I, I'd only buy it. At, like I ended up going, I'd go down to um uh the Wellington Street in like Westboro, and I'd go to the Home Hardware. That's where I wanted to get my Sani because they had this one they had this one brand that they sold that I couldn't find anywhere else that wasn't like sticky or anything like that. And it didn't smell super bad. So I Right. It's like I st- I had to drive like a halfway across town to buy it. It was like fucking anyway. Well, the Sani game really did pick up as the pandemic moved along, right? Yeah, yeah. Like at the beginning, you know, at the beginning, especially like take like the like um like uh, Pee Mc Vodka or whatever, like from Elmont, right? Yeah. Or wh- whatever, top shelf, you know? You would literally would get it. You thought that you literally had booze on your hand. Yeah. Like it just smelled like that. And then as they went on, they're like, oh, we can change that now, yeah. you know? Yeah. So the Sandy game definitely picked up. I, there was a local company. Um, I was talking about sanitizer on air, not in a nice way, talking about how it like... <laughs> Was it really smelling nice or whatever? And this local company dropped off a case of their their hand sanitizer for us, mm-hmm. and it was my favorite hand sanitizer throughout the whole pandemic. Hence, and the, it was yeah. Yeah. it was great. I still have a bottle here, and I'm not giving it to anybody. No, like no. no, it's our bottle that we get to use here. We went through it at the station too. Like anyway. No, yeah, I get, I get it, I get it, man, because yeah. it just, it just works for you, and uh, mm-hmm. I, like you say, I went out of my way to get it, and uh, it's good. And it's like I remember at the start of the pandemic, people just to just to end this sani thing on my my end, it's just like I remember people were saying like, oh, I don't believe in hand sanitizer, and it's just like, so you don't believe in like washing your hands ever, because that's all it is. You're basically just washing your hands on the go, right? Oh, I don't believe in that. That's awful. <laughs> Okay, well, stop washing your hands at home in your sink because it's the same fucking thing. Yeah, exactly. But it's convenient. You don't like convenience? Is that your problem? Again, again. So you are a non-hand washer, non-convenient lover. That's what that's what you're saying about yourself. I, I will so. say this to end the sani on my end. <laughs> don't use the sanitizer at the beer store on Somerset. Seriously, you become Spider-Man and you stick to Oh, that's the worst like, I, shit. That's I, I hate that. I, like I put it on, and then I had, and then I went to put money out, like pull money out of my wallet to pay for my beer, and I was like, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> "That's awesome." It was like stuck there, you know. And I'm like, "I'm fucking Spider Man right now." Yeah. I just climb up this wall. <laughs> or if you it's like, gross. you like really rub your hands together, and it, it starts, it starts, it starts rolling like that black kind of like, Bleh. yeah, that's gross, man. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, that's anyway. Gross. So well, anyway. anyway. I don't want to keep you all night, and I'm trying to keep the podcast within 45 minutes, so I don't know we could probably go for another 45, but... We probably could. Yeah, probably could. I should go go eat dinner and feed this snoring dog. Yeah, I gotta... I gotta... I start my new job tomorrow, so I should probably start mentally preparing for not being a bum anymore. (laughs) Good luck, buddy. Good luck. I liked it so much. (laughs) I I liked it when nobody needed me. Now people, now I'm I'm obligated to be somewhere. It's terrible. You're going to be okay. Yeah. yeah, It'll be, it'll be great. Well, I guess we'll see you at hope then if we don't see you before. 
Oh yeah, I'm always kicking around somewhere. Yeah, hope's gonna be yeah. good. I'm I'm really looking forward to the day because it'll be like the first thing that I probably do of that size in a long yeah. time. So and it'll be nice to see yeah. like friendly faces. Totally. Sweet. All right, Chels, uh, it's been awesome, and uh, maybe I'll make it down to the bone in the uh, next couple of months for some oysters. Yeah, man, come in, come in. All Just right. send me a message if you need a reservation or whatever, and thanks again for having me. No problem. Well, like I said, I, Good I, luck tomorrow. I have been doing a lot of dating, so maybe I'll need some place to go. Dude, yeah. oyster guard aphrodisiac. So <laughs> <this is that. laughs> well, I need something because I'm old. Anyway. Okay, we'll All help right. you out. All right, dude. Hey, buddy. Thanks again. Okay. Take care. Bye, bye. trashed ambulance out of alberta my boys i haven't talked to my buddy josh in a year went through a bit of a down downward spiral so i kind of lost motivation to keep track of people but now i'm on an upward spiral so i should totally call that guy anyway uh thanks to chelsea miller for being on the uh, program it was a very it was a very good program on the program today and um she's rad go and uh, listen to her on live 88.5 um, I think she's like mid-morning type of thing. Mid-morning, early afternoon. Or, or you can go to the Whale's Bone on Elgin and um, say hello there. Might want to call first. Anyway, this has been Ego and Vice. Uh, if you want to get a hold of me, you can reach out uh, to me at egoandvice at gmail.com. Send me a message. Say hello. Ask me a question. I like questions. Can't promise I'll have a good answer. But I'll read the question. Uh, the podcast is available on Spotify, iTunes, Deezer, Google Podcasts, um, Podomatic, you name it. Anywhere you can download or uh, stream podcasts, just search Ego and Vice. There's only one. There's only me. It's trademarked now. Oh, I trademarked it. Didn't I tell you guys that? Yeah, it's mine now. I own that shit. So I better not see it anywhere else. You owe me money. Big money, brother. Anyway, that's it for me. Um, I got a guest lined up for next week already. It's going to be a good one. Uh, he's never been on the podcast before either, so even even more exciting. So thank you. Have a good week, and uh, we'll see you then.
Later. You've got a real attitude problem, McFly. You're a slacker. Wanna raise the inside TV.